by it, but I'm just asking. Yeah, well, um, the plaintiffs in this case have asked for those very same documents for other students. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm just only curious. I'm only curious. I'm only wondering because the names did, were did released. You understand, did you understand what I just said? Yes, I understand what you just said. I was only asking oh. only because I wanted to understand it fully because I understand how that can affect a family and children when information is being released. And that's why I wanted you to be able to explain it. Right. To me, well, because to it, mean, it can affect a lot of people. Well, but, and, and, and the district also has to comply with the right to know law. The legislature imposes certain duties upon us to release information under the law that it says has to be released. And so it isn't always in our discretion to decide we're not going to give you something or we are going to give you something. It's up, it, you know, it, it, we have to look at the law and decide. Is this something that's required by the law to, re to, to release, or is it something we're not required to release? If we're required to release it, are there circumstances where we can redact information from it? If that's the case, then we redact the information. Um, but if you ask us for a contract, um, a contract we enter into to pave a parking lot or something like that, we're required to turn that over to you. You remember the public, the right to know law says that's what we're supposed to do. Oh, so I can request any information then? Is that um, what you're saying? Not any information, but you can request documents or information that's already assembled that we have. Things like contracts or um, policies or things like that. Okay. I'm only curious because when the names are put out like that, it just makes me question a lot of things because I know things have gone on on the school board that were not on the agenda that the school board has or staff has released before in the past of other people and their names were never mentioned. Um, this, this, so this I'll be able, I can put in a form to re request that information then, no, right? No, I mean it has to be specific. You have to right. ask us like, if, in this case, you, the, the school district is taking, is passing a resolution authorizing our office to enter our appearance and defend the lawsuit that was filed. In order to do that, we have to say what the lawsuit is what it was filed to, what the number was, so that we just don't say, authorize the solicitor to enter his appearance in a lawsuit. I mean, what lawsuit? The minutes need to reflect, and the board needs to take an action that's specific that tells you, know, you the public, and tells us what it is we're doing. And in this case, we're entering our appearance in a lawsuit filed by the people who are listed there against the school district. I mean, if, if, this, if there was a lawsuit um, filed by a, you know, a contractor or a roof contractor. If it was Bachman Roofing, we'd be saying the same thing. Authorize us to enter an appearance in the lawsuit of Bachman Roofing versus the, the Topahawken Area School District. We'd be, we'd be doing the same resolution. I understand that. I understand that. I was just looking at the lawsuit itself and what it pertained, and that was where my curiosity yeah, and was. If you notice in the lawsuit, uh, the agreement that is referred to in the lawsuit is attached to the complaint unredacted. Mm -hmm. right, that's what I was going to ask. We didn't. No, we didn't initiate that, correct? No. It was attached. That all came from the it's, outside. It was, it's attached unredacted to the complaint. We redacted it. It's attached unredacted to the complaint. Yeah, that's a public document. It is now. Well, no, it's, it's a public document what? because the complaint was filed in the Prothonotary's office, which is public. You have a copy right. and you can go on. Yep. The agreement was attached to that complaint unredacted, in an unredacted form. That's not the form that it was released by the school district. Right. No, I'm not saying it was. That's not what I'm asking. Um, I'm just going, when I was going through it, I wanted to understand exactly how it came to that point. Because if I read it correctly, it seems as though information was leaked prior. The agreement was released prior, but the names were removed. Okay. That's what the redaction was. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Just to clarify, are you uh, a resident of this district? Yes, I am. Okay. Children in the school as well? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Person who just walked in, any citizens? 
Oh, uh, <coughs> any citizens wish to address the board pertaining to any agenda items? Sure. <laughs> All right, um, moving on. Print words and recommendations to the superintendent. Uh, I just have one. Um, today, we kicked off our in-service days, um, started with a, a staff-wide breakfast, um, and then moved into the auditorium to talk a little bit about the impact that, that our staff can make on the lives of our kids, um, and the differences that we can make as educators, as uh, paraprofessionals, as custodians, as cafeteria, all the staff together and the impacts that they can make that we have on, on kids. Um, I think it started off as a great day. We had a lot of positive uh, feedback and a lot of positive interaction with our staff and we're certainly excited. Next Wednesday kicks off the first official day of school. So it's fast approaching um, and we are certainly excited to be able to welcome back a new school. I can add a little to that. Being in there, in there this morning, I felt a pretty positive energy coming from the, all the staff. I was pretty excited about that. Everybody seemed pretty ready to go this year. So, thank you. Um, the, the other item, and it, it falls a little bit on building your grounds, um, we have been trying to figure out what what are some possible solutions that we could potentially put in place to be able to bring the temperatures down in the building? Um, so we were very fortunate. We did have uh, Mr. Lynch, um, Neb's uh, dad, come through the building and kind of give us uh, an assessment of where we are on electric and on our feeds and what's feasible and what's not. Um, Mr. Lynch's grandfather did the electrical systems here at the district office. Um, and appears on the board in the back. So uh, we're pretty confident that you know whatever we get from Mr. Lynch and his firm, you know, is pretty solid. Uh, one of the things that he indicated is that we have enough electricity within the building um, to be able to put portable air conditioners into the building. Um, so it's something that Tom and the high school administration and I have been looking at is. What's the feasibility of putting those ones, you know, a unit in to each of the classrooms that kind of vents out the window and figure out how we can vent it and do it properly to at least bring some of those temperatures down. Um, we figure we need about 36 units uh, to be able to do that. Uh, each unit, Tom, costs about $500. Um, yeah. And, um, it, 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 it's a little tricky that the electrical, the electrical work at the, at the junior high, each room is kind of on its own circuit and it's not necessarily an issue. At the high school, there is three rooms to every circuit and they're oddly split and moved around um, because I'm sure nobody anticipated computers and smart ports and all the other stuff. Um, so in looking at that, they also said we might need to run some single lines um, to each classroom at the high school uh, to be able to put this in place. Um, we did get one unit to be able to test it. It came in today, so we're going to be starting to test that to see what it does. I mean, we're not under any delusion that this is going to all of a sudden drop temperatures down into the 60s and everybody will be great. Uh, the idea is how do we bring some temperatures down into some manageable numbers uh, to be able to you know, provide a comfortable level. Uh, so, what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able to test it, um, and if it works within a couple of our rooms, be able to put this in place. You know, figuring that there's about 36 rooms and they're coming in anywhere from, you know, 500 to 700 dollars. We'd be looking at like a, a 1,400, 14,000 BTU unit. We're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of you know eighteen to twenty-two thousand dollars that this would cost to be able to do this. Um, so, what I'm asking is, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Is that something we should explore? Is it something we should look into doing if we can get it done and do it? Um, you know, it might be. I know it's a quick fix and a solution, but it might be an inexpensive way, so to speak, to be able to get some. You know, AC into those classrooms and bring temperatures down. 
for both the start and the end of the school year. If you do it, you're going to have to let them run 24 7. They're not going to work. So to get all the humidity out, to get the temperature down before everybody comes in. You, okay. can't, you can't turn it on in the morning and expect it to cool the room. Similar about the side. I'm not opposed to this idea. There's only really one a couple of months out of the year when we really, really have the height of demand for that. I guess we'll have to sooner or later really decide what we're doing with our high school project. If it's going to stay kind of the way it is and we're just going to remodel things, then I guess sooner or later I think we're going to have to just design air conditioning into the current building and we stay with that footprint and we have to build all that a sixth grade or whatever it's going to be what it's going to be uh, versus by the time of portable units every, every year um, if they last two years whatever we're going to get out of it maybe we get more than uh, some of them last pretty long but it, you know we got to see what the cost is or the difference between the one you buy off the shelf at the local Hardware store that I'll say here. I'll say the local, you know, you get, they make different quality as well. You have your low end stuff and you have a more industrial one like we talked about that's made to run and made to be repaired. So I think we kind of have to decide what our, what our end goal is here. If we want to keep the building in air conditioning all building, and we might not want to get to the top of the line portals. If we say, well, this is going to be three years to five years out anyway before anything would happen, then we might just get the better units if we don't. The only thing I would say to that is I don't know that we're going to, they're looking to do something yeah. now, and I don't know where we're at yeah. with the conversation <laughs> yeah. for the rest of it. So. I guess we should just get prices on the ones that are pound down, and, and uh, I'll do some for three or something. Really heavy duty. I'll, I'll look, uh, look up what brand they are and see where we can really get them from just to see it, see where the price compatibility is. You know, if it's three times the price, then we might go away, which is like the, like the five dollar ones, and when we get two, three years out of them, by the extended warranty, we'll never hold them. Three year extended warranty for ten dollars. <laughs> so that's my, that's my two cents. <coughs> Is, is that something that the board would be comfortable with us? You know, if we get Chris and Chris takes a look at it and 
we move forward with you know, purchasing them to get it in and then ratifying at the next board meeting. I mean, I don't have a paper copy, but he came through and yeah, we walked, we checked every. Okay, I, I, I misunderstood. I thought the high school list still had to do the report. No, we would. There are areas. One of the things we would have to do at the high school is figure out. There might be a potential where we've got to run some lines to be able into the classrooms, um, new electrical lines. There's, there's room in the breaker boxes, but the. You know, like in the 100 hallway, 102, 103, and 105 are all on the same circuit, on the same breaker. Um, and, you know, one of the things that they said is you may be able to plug it in, and just how the units cycle, you may luck out. And he said, or they may all kick on at the same time, and you blow the whole, you know, side of that. Right. So he said, you know, what he would do, he would suggest is you try to balance the load and look at it, and then see, do you need to do you need to run an extra line to the middle room because the other two can handle? Uh, and obviously, with that also comes the caveat to the staff of, okay, we then need to watch what else we're plugging in. Um, you know, we're not putting coffee pots and microwaves and everything else, and then cranking on the AC, and that's and that's an issue. Room, like I know that I remember all the classrooms and stuff, but there's enough windows to get the hot air out. And look, where you're mm -hmm. always okay. Yeah. Because some of those don't think, man, they're close together. Yeah. But they have outside windows that you can make something up there. Almost, there are a couple rooms that we just won't be able to because they don't have the windows. Um, but every, right now, the majority of them bent into the courtyard or bent yeah, those in out to the exterior. Can, can I interject here? I know it's out of order. I apologize. I just had a similar situation like this um, with real estate. It wasn't commercial, so it might not apply. But um, with the roof vent or roof fan being put in, like an attic fan kind of thing, I don't know if that would apply, but it like took it down like 10 degrees. And then the homeowner actually was able to turn up their air conditioning, didn't have to run it as low as what they were. And it made a huge diff. I, I was shocked at the difference. Just putting in that, in that, I don't know if I think there's the any difference way. here. Would be in a home. There's an attic that's holding the hot air. Where here we have a ceiling roof. So you there's no mean? there's no in between space. So not not the bar joist, yeah. eighteen inches. Yeah. Where the bar joist is that says well, your insulation. The insulation is the roof. But it's only. Uh, I mean, like with yeah, barns, with well, barns you have like yeah, tunnel ventilation. Yeah, you're not going to have much hot air trapped there because technically you're yeah. in a house, your insulation is dead. You don't yeah, see you're in a joist yeah. on the attic floor. Yeah. Stout P. 
EC is hereby authorized to enter its appearance on behalf and in defense of the district in the lawsuit filed by Mark and Lisa Hassler individually and on behalf of Matthew Hassler versus Topogon Area School District number 22-10214 in the Berks County Court of Common Pleas and further that Dr. Andrew Netnitz is authorized to execute any pleading verifications and all other necessary documents and litigation on behalf of the board as, uh, as required. Excellent. Any comments? Roll call. Betts. Abstain. Coffin. Yes. Clough? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. Petrick? Yes. Yes. Just to clarify, I abstain because Matthew Hassler and Hassler excavating new work for a company that I have. So um, we talked a lot about the, the parking lot. Um, when we were last at the Billy and Browns Committee, we heard that an estimated number to install a, um, an approved uh, parking lot would run us, and that would be paved. It would be under an acre of disturbance to do a slight drive. And then a parking lot, we could be somewhere in the neighborhood of two hundred fifty to $300,000. We're at a kind of a critical point where we either need to start making some decisions to put that parking lot in place or some version or something, um, or either you know kill that idea and figure out another option. Um, Tom has been working over the last couple of days with the Brandywine Transportation to look at other alternatives, and I don't know if you want to talk about any of those. Uh, well, it came to mind that the high school is our biggest area. It's, we never even considered the high school as a um, as an option for the transportation uh, contract to be at because we figured it was going to be under construction immediately in this you know this school year. Uh, well, that, that's not going to be the case. But we just looked at. I took the Jeff from Grammy went up there today to look at it, um, and there are options for us to to have all the buses in, at the high school in one place either at the far end of the uh, at this, uh, parking lot by the new gym, um, along the, the field there, along the field hockey field, or potentially over at the other side. But, but that was dismissed over by the ag area and the modulars. But that was dismissed because there's really no op option for office space over there. And office space would either be either in that concession stand that's right there, um, or in the um, at the end of the hallway, uh, outside of the old, old gym, there's a, an office there that can be uh, retrofitted for them. She's, um, I mean, they would prefer to have their own buses in one place. Um, what, we were, what we're planning on doing is having them split the buses out between all four buildings. Some here, some at Bethel, some at the other two buildings. That's not ideal, um, but it, it, it could work. Um, so I, I'm not sure. I, I just we kind of just left it at, well, let's discuss it, let's talk about it. Um, I'm not sure how everybody else feels about it, but um, we could fit all the buses in one area if we, if we did it in high school. The other uh, um, benefit would be that she would be right, right near Mary. Uh, Mary would be right down the hall from her, typically, so, and uh, that would help, so. But again, is that, is that, a, is that something that's gonna happen? Maybe this year, it'll be, it'll be one thing, and then next year we have to move them out of there, I just don't know if anybody is. is there any conflict with student and staff parking down there and the buses getting back in there? So where we were, where we would be looking at if we moved into the high school would be right next to the gym in the parking area that overlooks the back fields. Um, we would have to put some kind of barrier to kind of denote that that's no longer a parking area, it's only for buses. Right now we do have 
junior high staff that park there. Um, we could shift them within the parking lot. There's enough parking spaces to accommodate the staff and the students, um, but we would lose a significant chunk of the, of the parking lot to be able to do that. I know a lot of people during the athletic events park there in their cars and overlook uh, the athletic fields as well instead of heading down and Friday, Friday night soccer game, you go there, I mean, that is all full and they're out in the front of the school. And that's, and in that case, we would have to shift, parking would have to shift across the front and fill the front, and then we would be utilizing our, our side parking lots. So we would park the existing, in the existing bus spaces, the long buses, where they naturally drop the kids off, but we just utilize those. So, <coughs> there's just not enough. There's not enough spaces. Like they have 39 vehicles, and I think that just the long buses, spots. and then yeah. put your short but buses, you your vans. If you had your tall hockey runs, you know that's all the tall hockey runs essentially have because that's where they park. You put them in your long spaces and you park everything else on the ag side, but then it's problematic for your office space. Because I think they know that. And marching van uses that parking lot. And driver and that they well, I go back to the best solution is we have a lot that's dedicated just for transportation. Yeah, I, mean, I agree with Kyle. I think we should just spend a lot here, spend the money, get it done, and move on. So, on that note, part of the plans for the high school had a lot out back. That wasn't for transportation. It wasn't. Invest the three hundred thousand in a lot there that was on the plans originally, or initially, however you want to look at it. Could that lot be put there for the three hundred thousand and not spend three hundred here and then three hundred there in a year and a half when or whatever? You know what I mean? so the, the only benefit for why that lot was feasible is that's where all the staging was going to be. That's why it just, you know, would already be, they would already have laid stone down and compacted. Um, you know, if we ever, if and when we do the project, I would imagine that area would again be the staging ground for it. Is wasteful. Is is the 
But if it's under yeah. this, it's yeah. under the, like it's under the amount, and it's it not being stormwater. Feel free, somebody else call down to the county and talk to them. It's not hard. They pick up the phone and you talk to them. Tell them what you want to do. They tell you what you can do, what you can't do. They're very helpful. They don't. It wouldn't be hard to put in a small retention pond. At the bottom of trees in it. Yep. I mean, it's not. Yeah. I mean, we could do that in what? Two, three days. All the way. Yeah. I mean, I don't, whatever we, whatever we do, I think we do it by code. I don't know that we'll keep it we want to be we'll keep it a government entity asking for forgiveness later on. Um, That's for some reason. Sometimes we <laughs> have to. But I also don't, I mean, I think, you know, we, we met with the township and the township, I don't know that the township is the obstacle, but I also don't want somebody from the county driving by flying that all of a sudden there's a still lot sitting there and we find ourselves not only having to rip it out, restore it, and all that. Park the buses on the grass and put me, and then maintain it. Is it is that you didn't disturb a thing? Is that legal to park on the grass? I mean, it's our grass. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, when there's a rain until it until it rains and the buses no. sink. Yeah. Then <laughs> you put stone on. You're maintaining. It's perfectly legal. Right? Maintaining is perfectly legal. legal. There you would be. You run it up and stone it back in. I just don't see spending two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars on a bus park on my This would be like we're in the business of educating kids, not making architects right. rich. And I'll be the first to say it. And I would say it with Jeff Straub in the room. They they missed with our project. Bill sat here every meeting. Are we sure we're good? Are we sure we're good? And we missed. <coughs> so, lost faith. Joining the doctor and has been called down to the ag department order. They got a call to talk about this parking lot so we can get all the paperwork in order at the or done, whatever. Let's do it. <laughs> right, I'm serious. I'm keeping it under an acre disturbance. We already were approved for all by the township. All as you need is uh, a, a simple ENS plan on file. Right. Draw it up. Show Draw it what up. you're doing. They'll go down and sign it. Yep. I, I agree with that. You don't need to do that. You, you guys didn't have the legwork already. And we're willing to donate your time to do this. So if the, if the township gave us the yes, which they did, they, they were here they to the plan us to take it to the county, which is what I'm hearing, why don't we do it? I think we still have to go through the we still would have to go through the permitting process with the township. So they gave us the no no, no not under no, an acre not under an acre. The, the township said that it was okay. the, the rule. Did they, they didn't want anything under an acre? They, because they didn't even understand why we were asking. Them. They said why isn't it done? Wow. So that was their comment. Which yeah. Is, yeah. And then they, uh, they they wanted to verify. At that point in time, there was talk about adding some significant expansion to that end of the building. And they did, their engineer uh, referred you to the, what do they call it? The poop plant. The septic. Yeah. We, had to, we had to watch our septic field. Yeah. The, the, the well, sewer, the sewer, sewer enforcement, enforcement sewer office. enforcement office. And there's a, there's a setback that we've got to stay with the parking lot for that, you know. Correct. So that's not, you know, just do that. You can access it from the back here. So are we talking over here now? Or are yeah, where are we talking about? Room? If we're doing it. I think the easiest is to do it over there. It's flat already. If it's as simple as screw we gotta lay tubing or whatever and then you know ground and then stone, that's probably the easiest thing. It's the least disturbance we have to do. We just cut out our curve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The top soil we grew water attention burns and then just convert it. Yeah. So is everybody in place as that? Are we okay with moving forward to that side and move the boat on? How do we? So I have no idea how to draw any of that up. So whoever is whoever can do that, you know, we certainly will take care of contacting the county and working through that. Um, if the three of you guys want to work with us, and we'll we'll do it. We can certainly sit here, draw it up. We run it down to the 
the county get approval. Don't they actually have something drawn up for us already? They do. So we can use that as long as it's under an acre. Downsize it to an acre. Downsize it to an acre. Should be good to go. Fair point, man. So how we, so is it Patrick Palmer and myself kind of leave this? Are we good with that? Yeah. Maybe not any of you guys as a part of it. That's for me. I'll be doing it. Okay, moving on. Policy. Mr. Hacker. 9.4.1. Give first reading with the intent to give second reading and final approval on September 20th, 2022 to the following policies. I'm going to say as listed. And uh, 9.4.2, approve the deletion of the following policies, again, as listed. We would need a vote on that, then. Looking for a second. Yeah, looking for a second. Any comments? So, we're just voting on a reading of? Yeah, first reading. Any comments? Roll call. Roll call. Cotton? Yes. Clark? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Chris Miller? Yes. Heck? Yes. Bats? Yes. notes on my other agenda and I, I missed it. Um, <coughs> grounds. Tom, can you give an update on the stadium doors? Where are we at? They're installed. Um, they were, I think it was 14,000 and we got reimbursed for one of them, 7,000. Okay. From the insurance company. I guess we will we'll wait for skins. We'll wait for the skins. We'll wait for the... Okay. How about the automated entry? Separate vendor, or is that it's, it's for sure? Okay, okay. Cool. Well, what notes would you like to take?
at one thing from 9.7. I had a note in my phone since uh, that fall sports started. Where are we at with football? You know, so how many do we have? Um, so this was as of two weeks ago. Um, we had seven high school kids rostered, eight junior high kids rostered, and they were waiting for additional paperwork on three high school kids and six junior high kids. Okay. That's a lot higher number of them here. That's pretty okay. solid. Yeah, so that is a pretty so solid number. So we have 10 and 14. So that's 24 students. That would be 24 students. Okay. Now, as I said, that was two weeks ago. So yeah, I meant now that it officially started. Yeah, I, I, get, I can get that. Send that number out to yep. us all. And then also, in another two weeks, we'll have another check in just to see how many stuck on when it got, when the heat might turn up. I do know there's a lot of kids who are extremely excited about it. Good. Cody still talks to a lot of the kids and they're very excited for the opportunity. Yeah, what I think officially started Monday. Personnel, Mr. Palmer. 9.8.1. I move that we accept the following resignations. Heather Innes as a elementary music teacher, effective 8.1.2022. Sophie White as a learning support teacher, effective 8.4.22. And Heather Spencer as a Kyle Young paraprofessional, effective 7.18.22. That. Okay. We'll so, discussion a little bit. The, the one thing I wanted to, we have a, a couple parents and a couple staff members ask if we've ever considered um, at each of the elementaries we have a separate music teacher at each building. Um, I tried to inquire and I, and I did eventually find out why that happened because for all of our specials we have one individual at each of the buildings and I guess several years or one for both buildings. Several years ago, um, there was some consolidation as people left or retired. Uh, we moved to one art teacher, one phys ed teacher, um, et cetera, per district <coughs> for the elementary. Um, and I guess staffing wise, it just made sense to keep two music teachers because we had, instead of furloughing, two music teachers at that point. There's been some requests that would we consider not doing a music teacher and adding a, another. Um, specialty area as the second one and not the music. Um, so I don't want to speak on, you know, behalf of the district to say this is what we're definitely doing or not. We have posted for the position, um, but now is an opportunity. We do have Heather will be held until October. Um, so my recommendation would be is if we are interested in pursuing that, that we maybe put out a survey to our parents to see what interest there is, um, as opposed to, you know, do we want dedicated music departments at both things, at both buildings? Is it a dedicated PE teacher? Is it dedicated art? Um, you know, so I kind of want to just throw out for discussion, is this something we don't even want to explore? Um, we have some very successful music programs. And I would hate to truly impact both music programs, but I will say there's a lot of research out there that says phys ed and getting kids moving also is a positive for <coughs> education. So my only thought on that would be if you're going to do music, can we add a strings uh, teacher or strings department or whatever you want to call it? Because my son was in school, he played the violin and he had no chance to play that in the school band, but yet Hamburg is has a strings department and or whatever you want to call it, orchestra, orchestra, and they uh, have a lot of people in it. I was at one of their concerts, and I was amazed how many kids were up on stage going to town. So this is all. Okay. In the elementary school, just correct me if I'm wrong, is it still that their music is a double special, and they only have one single gym class? I always felt youth today, the more extra.
exercise and health they can be taught to be better for society moving forward. Lack of lots. <coughs> I don't know. So how do we want to direct uh, Dr. Nesic to move forward without a survey to the public, what their thoughts are, hire it back the way it is, give it some direction. I think this year you've got to hire it back the way it is right now. You've already started. We have a long-term soap that we can flex in. So we can go another route. Yeah, I think we could flow. I think we could work. Could, could you rework things? We, we would have to move quick.
going the long-term sub route on a music teacher for this year would promise that we're not eliminating that position, we're adding it, we just don't know what that position is, um, and they're okay with it, then we can move forward with a long-term sub and, and go that route for this year, and then, you know, do that work kind of throughout this year and have things ready to roll then for next year. Yeah, I think if you're going to, I mean, you want to do it right, so we don't want to rush into something we're not sure about. That's what I guess that's what my point is. You don't want to do it right. But I, I like the long term stuff like you. That's my opinion. Now, you said yeah. you feel like, oh, sorry, I'm not here. Oh, you're good. It's <laughs> Andy. <laughs> um, you said you feel like you could get this done. Yeah, I think, I I mean, basically what we're looking, what I'm just looking at is if we're interested in it, just kind of the blessing is like, go ahead, put the survey out and see how it comes back. I think you do the survey. Yeah. You know, that's, that could easily be done. We can have the results back, you know, in a several days and have a pretty good gauge on it and have all that information ready to go for the next meeting to say, or even before and push it out yeah. and let you know. Um, it gives me some opportunity to have a conversation with the current music teacher at, at Burnville to say we're looking at this. Um, and, you know, there's, if there's a comfort level, you know, I guess our first meeting isn't until the 6th. Um, so at the 6th, if we say, listen, we, we like the idea that overwhelmingly people want this special, let's post. You know, we would post it on the 7th of September. It's open 10 days. The 17th, um, we'd be able to, you know, we try to interview as they come in, to potentially have somebody on the agenda for the 20th, it could be tight, it could be doable, and then it's just depending on if that person's coming from another district, it could be November till they're released. If it's somebody who's new and does not have a, a position, that person could start right away and we could be ready to roll right from music right into PE. Uh, you said that position is posted currently? It is posted currently. Have we had any inquiries or? We have. Okay. So we go with the survey. Okay. So we need a vote. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Kohler, 
who retired, was he teaching chemistry when he retired? Yes. <coughs> okay, um, why would he need a mentor? He's coming from uh, why I'm missing. So it, it pretty much is just uh, Mrs. Weidenheimer working with him to get him up to speed on our systems, kind of how we run things. Um, it's not unusual for us, you know, if we have an experienced teacher, it's just to kind of help acclimate to the district. Any other comments? Roll call. Chris Miller? Yes. Heck? Yes. Betts? No. Coffin? Yes. Clap? Yes. Palmer? No. Fox? No. Hendrick? No. Is there something in there that I don't want to remove? Concept of that. I mean, isn't that like part of your? I would remove the last one for now. <laughs> All right, we want to remake the motion. Well, I'm trying to figure out what they think why there's a problem, but if you're trying to bring somebody up to speed with the school policies, it's going to make them learn a lot faster. I started a new job and didn't throw you in and say, here, do it. You're looking around like, which way do I go? I mean, I, but that person doesn't get stipend to show you.
do have to submit. Those other checklists have been submitted. If they're not complete, they do not get made. And that's across the board for all of them. So will they file a grievance after we vote this? If we don't approve this, will they file a grievance? We did the last time. We just brought it back the next month and then passed. Okay. So is this time period that they're required to do this the entire school year? Is this the first three months? What, what, what are you looking at when you're looking at the mentors? The mentor checklist is a, it's essentially a four-year checklist. They don't get paid until the end of the year after they can submit all necessary documentation that they need to fill in. And we have those monthly check-ins to kind of have some checks throughout the year. We can get you those checklists as well, too, so you can see. Let's keep moving. We make a motion when we're done here. 9.86. I believe we could have found volunteers for the 22 23 school year as listed. Excellent. Any comments? Yeah. 
This is trying to confuse you. This is Christopher through Susan. Yes. Christopher through Susan. Roll call. Hat. Yes. Fats. Yes. Kaufman. Yes. Clark. Yes. Palmer. No. Fox. No. Patrick. No. Passes. Thank you. Rest of the Yes. Uh, any new or old business? Uh, so I had a phone call from someone who, I don't know, and you might know this, I think she said she spoke to you about a volunteer person who has special needs. So it would be her, her son. events is listed there. By the time we meet again here, the students will be back in the building. Um, I do have one thing on I guess, new business. I was asked by one person and a couple others had asked it to get back to me of why it feels like we're starting school earlier every year and why a Wednesday start date. So I think I know why. Um, Bill said because of the Labor Day and the way it falls, and then also marrying BCTC's calendar. Is that right? Yeah. What's to stop BCTC from next year starting on the 20th? And if they do, what do we do? So what BCTC does is they put out a draft calendar initially to all the districts and saying this is essentially, um, you know, we're, we're looking at a calendar. Can you consult and look at your calendars and give us a draft copy of your calendar again of where you're moving. So they take the, the existing calendar that we have, try to mirror that, ask districts if there's any changes. They draft one, they bring it back. Um, there are a number of districts that are actually starting on Monday. And so VCTC tries to shoot somewhere in the middle as close to as little as possible, um, which essentially has, drives a lot of the, um, the days as to why we start. Um, the what has happened in the past, and I don't I don't remember if it was the year we pushed the year back, but there's been a couple years where our start date has been different than BCTC's, and then those kids lose that amount of time um, at, at the at, at the centers. Um, I don't think we're any earlier. It seems like it because Labor Day is later this year. I mean, since I've been on the board, it seems like we always started around the 22nd to the 24th in that neighborhood. Um, and that's we're starting on the 23rd. I thought we we're always on started the Wednesday before the Labor Day. Yeah, this yeah, is you're, the entire you're week. On, I, I thought about that after you and I talked. Yeah, so we, we used to, we just the past two years have been this early. The, the last couple of weeks, so we, we have, we have, we would used to start the Monday before Labor Day because we would do 
four a four day week, four days, a four day week, yes. and then the five day week. Um, Some years we did a three day week. Yes. And yes. then correct. And right. that's and as BCTC and other districts shifted, um, we shifted to the Wednesday because personally I think starting Monday is is really early. So that's why to try to keep a balance of you know, to stick somewhere in the middle with BCTC and some of our other districts. Um, we put it on the 24th. So we're shifting because everyone else is shifting. Yeah. And, you know, it, are there districts that are starting the 29th? Sure. And there's districts that are starting anywhere from, I think, Hamburg. We start Wednesday. Hamburg starts Thursday. Some start Tuesday. Some start Wednesday or Monday. I think the latest is next Monday or the, the following Monday, the 29th. Um, you know, the other benefit is it also gets us out. We are starting a little bit earlier in August. We also finish a little bit earlier in June, within the first week. That was um, going to be my comment. The more you go into June, the less interest. I mean, once you hit June yeah. 1st, the kids are disinterested in school. Mm -hmm. I think the teachers are disinterested in school. And it, it, the earlier you get out in June, so if you got to start a little earlier, you get out closer to the beginning of June, you're further ahead. Because you get to that June 8th, there's no education going on in June. I don't care what anybody says. There's no education going on in June. So it's there, there are a number of districts in the county that are getting out before late, before Memorial Day, um, just for the ones that are starting on Monday, and then um, don't have as long of an Easter break. They There's a, a couple of them that are getting out more than their last as well. So now this June, graduation was June 3rd. So I think it's June 2nd. <coughs> We we started, I believe, on the twenty fifth last year. We started the same Wednesday, and what the other positive is, I think it you know it, it has you know, where we eased four four and five, we're now three four four and five. So you know, I'm not saying that we have to ease it, but our parents what are your thoughts? I like getting out early. I also <laughs> would cut Christmas break in half, Easter break in half, and get out in the middle of May week. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, when I went to school, once May hit, I was done. I mean, I was just, I, I stayed home if I could. I mean, I worked. It was just But I, I know I a lot of people like to travel over the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Time to do that, but it's it's hard. Yeah. It's you can get warm in spring, though. It's hard to get to But I think at least starting on this Wednesday, it's like Monday suck, so you yeah. don't want to start school on Monday. So you start on the Wednesday, and then you're like three days, and then you're done. And then you have you know four days, and then you have a nice long weekend. No, wait, early five weekend. days, and then four days. No. No, we no, have three days. Friday. We have, Monday, we, have we have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we have Monday through Thursday, mm -hmm. and then we have all Friday, Monday, yep. and then we have another four day, and then like what the fourth week is the third, fourth week, third week, fourth week. Oh, I see. That. It's then it's so the five, five days. days. Yeah. So it eases you back into it a little bit, and that first week is just like you know getting back in the swing of it. Yeah. It's nothing like. Any citizens wishing to address the board? I stand up um, kids. I was wondering, does the board, does the district keep track of students who withdraw from school? We do? So you would, if you're still remaining in the district, you would have to let the district know that you're not going to send your child to school. Is that right? Like, how do you keep track of that? Like, I'm, I'm curious, are the numbers going up? Or are they static? Or, so, uh, just, it's been two weeks now, and I've heard of three children that are not returning to school. Two are doing homeschool, and one is going to do cyber school. And, I don't know, that alarms me, um, and I'm wondering why. Like, is it because it's um, more readily available? Is it more, is homeschool now more acceptable than it used to be? Uh, that's why I'm just curious, if you keep track of the numbers, uh, how, how are they? Because this is the first time actually, well, no, I do know two other people that did it 
two years ago, decided to homeschool. But in all my life, I've never really heard of people choosing to keep their children out of school because I feel like school is such a introduction to life, like introduction to your job, introduction to how you're going to get along with people and, and introducing you to two people that you're going to have to get along with possibly that you don't like and, and courses you're going to have to take that you possibly don't like. So I guess as a, as a parent, as a taxpayer, it alarms me that students don't want to come back to school. So we have, um, historically, several years ago, we were a little over 1,400 students. We've now covered the last couple of years at about 1,330. Um, during COVID, we lost a number of students to cyber schools. Sure. Um, so that impacted, and then we never, they never came back. They, they stayed, oh, our really? numbers remained. And the opportunity was they never came back? Mm -hmm. So we had, we were at one point down, you know, hovering low 20s, looking to even bring that into the teens. Um, when we went at the high point of COVID, we were in the 70s, and now as of last school year, we were like in the low 40s, and I haven't seen the numbers for this school year. Um, so, you know, there's about 20 kids that we have rebound or have uh, gone out. We have a, an extremely high population of homeschool students. Um, COVID was one of those catalysts. We had about 200 students in homeschool pre-COVID. We're probably about 250, would you say? We're up in the three now. Okay, um, that I've chosen to homeschool. So, uh, I, you know, I'm not sure, you know, we didn't, the students that we saw move to homeschool did not, did not return. Um, you know, where we do see parents who homeschool to return is once they get to the high school age. We I was going to say now, well. I have talked to yeah. a math teacher of high school, and she has said it's a nightmare. For these kids that in some some Christian schools and then some home schools, when they find that they can't teach it, then they take them back to school. And she said it's a nightmare. So I was going to ask you, do you find that? Do you find people coming back mm -hmm. in high school? Yeah. Okay. We, we, in the area right now, um, the state has loosened up a lot of the regulations on homeschool. Um, one of the appeals is, and, and even the district itself has always allowed more flexibility. So we do have homeschool students that are homeschooled, but they will come in for ag classes, music classes, um, sports. Uh, several years ago, that was an opportunity that uh, the state passed that if you are homeschooled, you could participate in all extracurriculars. So that made it a little more appealing to homeschool. Um, the network of parents, um, are, they're very organized in the area. There's a lot of supports um, that operate out of some of the churches in the area, which is a, is a plus, like sometimes when you're on your own and you're trying to figure out what on earth you're gonna do, but there's a lot of networks that are set up in this area to be able to do that, um, and pretty supportive. Um, Mimi, does, Mimi does a phenomenal job with our homeschool parents, and I think you know that's another appeal you know, it's, you know, we don't want to lose them, but Mimi is very, she works with them to try to, how do we link resources from the district? We have provided curriculums, you know, textbooks. Um, if that's how they choose to homeschool their children, or to school their children, then my attitude is I want to work together with them, sure. so we're involved. Um, and so I do have uh, quite a few parents, actually, where they have their child come and take a special. I had one a few years back where they were comfortable teaching math. Their child struggled with math. They knew that that would be a struggle. They had their child, no, I'm sorry, it's opposite. Their child struggled in math, so they wanted to homeschool them in math and take more time. So um, they homeschooled for that subject. Um, and, and, and I also had the opposite of that. Their child came for math, um, and they homeschooled the rest. Um, if they ever come back, just like saying, okay, I can't go to school anymore, then they can come back a train wreck or with needing a lot of it help? It can be, but I will tell you that the norm is that it's not a train wreck. Okay. I, I'll be honest, I've had some that are. Um, our teachers and our principals and our staff step the one or two times in the 18 years I've been here um, that I've experienced that it's a train wreck. Um, the teachers and, and the principals, they've stepped up to that plate. Those children got fast-tracked, um, and they got right where, right where they are. Matter of fact, one of the children, and I'm going to share very little, I don't want to identify them, 
um, but one of the children got recognized for something they did um, that was academic. And so um, it, it really got turned around. And the parent thought they were doing the best for their child, children, I should say, um, and they came in, he, he sat at my chair, and he goes, I can't do this anymore, it's not good for my kids. And I said, okay. And we took it, and we stepped in, and that's why I try to partner. Um, you know, if, if, as a parent, it's your choice how you're going to school your children. We have so many options. Um, and I always emphasize to them, we are here. We don't, don't, don't think you're in this, you're alone. If you're struggling, if you have questions, we're here. Um, and I have a lot of parents who take us up on that. They call and, and, and we help them where we can. I'm just curious. Thank, thank you. Uh, my name is Jen Kester. <clears throat> just a little positive, the Bethel PTO for back to school night. Um, we just want to let the teachers know how much we appreciate them. So we're going to be getting them some food, pizza, cupcakes. Um, we got some local businesses to do some gift card donations. Um, we're going to have, not, not every teacher will get a gift card, but we're going to do like a scavenger hunt throughout the Bethel Elementary School. So um, just, and also be on the lookout. We're going to, we have a new board for the PTO. So we're going to be trying lots of new different fundraising and hoping to get some different events going to the school. So what time should we be there for supper? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to do it for lunch for that. Oh, lunch. <laughs> yeah. So well, we are time. having a fundraiser on <laughs> September 13th at the Texas Roadhouse in Wyoming. So. Make sure we see information on that. Okay. Or, I know. Like we, anything, we, anything we, you guys have. If you can get it out to us, or at least I'll support it. That's what I was wondering if the events can be listed on here, like on here. If you if you can get that information to me, we'll make sure that that information goes out. Okay. Years ago, they used to have any copies that or any fundraisers that they did. When I when I was in PTO, we had to make copies for every board member and an administrator, okay. and then somehow that just went away. Well, now do they, they still do a newsletter? Yeah. Plus, yeah. yeah. every time the newsletter went out, they sent the, the copies I to the I can get Tara. Tara Rollins is our secretary. I can get her to email it. I mean, we gave it to Wendy Fisher, and then she sent it. Do you remember that meeting? Was that when copies yeah. of, like, uh, board stuff came, like yeah. fundraisers or the newsletter? Anything that went through PTO came through the board? There was a short period of time that you guys approved flyers. No, but I mean, they just they just sent them out. So you got oh, for you guys to email them. Yeah, yes. yes, there was a little bit of time that that happened. Is, I don't know what you is that something you could not. work with the, with the PTOs and the building secretaries to be able to coordinate that? So that yeah, and I can even scan you the flyers that get approved so you know what's happening. But you know, yeah, that that's great. Because I know a lot of times the PTO will send for approval before yeah. they get sent out, and I can just. I can make copies, put them in your folders. Same with Actually. the booster club. Sure. Same with the booster club. Boosters. I'm sorry, Bill. No. Same with the booster club if they do anything at the high school. Okay. Where are you at, the I missed my work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's on the uh, count. That is on the calendar. I'll have to get you the calendar. Second. All in favor of conviction, send us and I. 